Welcome to today's episode of Blending Fab, a podcast all about relationships where we explore expectations and lessons learned along the way. To keep up to date with what's coming up, be sure to follow us on Instagram at blending underscore fab. Let's get straight into it. What would you say is the best advice you've ever received related to relationships? Uh, For me, the best is communication is the key to the relationship. Uh, For me, uh, it was always try to understand where the where your where your mate is coming from. Try to be sensitive to what they're saying and where they're coming from. Got it. Now let's go back to the communication. What? How? So that was the best advice. How did you find it to be true for you and beneficial for you to do of valuing communication? Uh, well, for me, um, when situations will come about, uh, a lot of times there's misunderstandings because people are not communicating. Mm-hmm. And one person might be thinking of um, one thing and not really have that intention that the other person is thinking. So, mm-hmm. yeah, uh, communication resolves that all. That way you come to a, a resolution. Yeah. So, yeah. Effective communication. Yes. Because just because you're talking doesn't mean that you're saying what needs to be said so that your partner understands what yes. you're trying to say. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Effective communication. How hard or easy is it for communication to be effective? Because like we can be talking and I feel like I am being effective. I feel like I'm being as clear as I can be. But sometimes the partner or the other person doesn't understand or take it in a way that I'm giving it. Yes. Well, and that's where my part comes in, where you have to understand your partner. And that entails kind of knowing where they're coming from because then it helps you to formulate what it is you're trying to say based off of where you know your partner is Mm -hmm. because not everybody's on the same intellectual level so if your partner let's just say not to be insulting is a little slower well you Uh have to use small words or speak slower or or make it almost like you're speaking to a, a child almost Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Use certain words that are very comprehensible. Okay. Okay. Now, how does that go though? Because sometimes that can be harder. Like you're trying to, for lack of better words, dummy it down to make sure they do clearly understand what it is that you're saying. How does that work with another person that maybe gets offended by your hope and explaining it clearly? And they're like, "I'm not a child. What do you think this is?" Da 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 da, and you go left real fast. Well, that again goes into learning your partner. So that's kind of essential. If you understand where your partner is intellectually and and emotionally, well, then you can formulate your communication based off of that. Like if somebody is more advanced, well, you don't dummy it down. You speak fluently and, and, and in whatever vocabulary level you're at. Right, right. Mm. Now, I will say that sometimes it does help to have a mediator um, Mm. because sometimes when you have a a third voice um, Mm -hmm. that is Mm non-biased, sometimes that's important with communication because Mm -hmm. then they can kind of bring the resolve to where the misunderstanding is that the other person may not be relaying. So... What would you say is the criteria for identifying who could be a mediator? Because like bringing on somebody to help is great, but what should I be mindful of in bringing that person on? Like, should it be my best friend, his best friend? No. No, it it should be somebody who's non-biased, somebody who doesn't really know either of you. Then neither one can make the claim that the mediator is being biased. Yeah. Yeah. Or someone that does know both of you equally mm-hmm. and has the level of comfort to be able to come and have that uh, conversation mm-hmm. um, without taking sides. So again, being non-biased. Yeah. I there's think always that's- someone there's always a, someone in the family or someone that's associated that knows both parties 
yeah. and has an equal relationship and can give um, a non-biased, uh, you know, reasoning or opinion to help them resolve the issue. So, so, so good. So good. I have a couple friends and um, they'll reach out and she'll be like, pick a side, pick a side. I said, I don't pick sides. Yeah. <laughs> no. yeah. you, talk piece, you talk your piece and we figure out where we can meet in the middle. Um, yeah. Sides, it could be bad. Um, yes. Mm -hmm. It never works. <laughs> that never works because the other person always feels like, oh, you're taking sides, and yeah. then that doesn't get a resolve either because that can bring in uh, negative feelings. So, absolutely, absolutely. Ryan, your piece you said was learning your partner, and in Blended Fab, we talk about blended families, attitudes, and beliefs, and you have to really learn who your partner is um, the good days, the bad days, the highs, the lows, and in between. What skills did you think? or need it for you in learning your partner? Uh, compassion was the, was the biggest one for me. Mm -hmm. um, also being in touch with, uh, which one of these things a lot of guys struggle with, being in touch with your feminine side. Mm. You need to be able to understand not only where, who you are as an individual, but where your partner is coming from, where what their life story is, yeah. and taking all of those different types of things and putting it together when it comes to especially the the, the tough times. Mm -hmm. uh, a person's life story delegates some of the things that they do in their life, um, some of the things that they may falter on in their lives, mm -hmm. um, their strong suits, their weak suits, all of those come from their life story. So if you learn your partner's life story, you have a better understanding of the individual. Okay. How about you, Stacey? What helps you to learn Rodney? The same thing. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. okay. The same. Cool. So when growing up, who were your role models for couples? Like, did you always see yourself getting married? Me? No. <laughs> <laughs> I hope that I did because my parents, um, they were married at one point and then they divorced uh, while I was very young. But my grandparents were married for 60 plus years. Wow. And they, they, my grandmother, well, grandparents were my role model. Okay. Yes. Mm. So, uh, if I had to say, um, I always knew that when I got myself to a certain point in life that I wanted to be married and have a family, mm -hmm. um, the role model that I saw that presented that was, was kind of a reverse situation. My mother wasn't married. So as a child, I always wanted to exceed mm -hmm. where she was in life. Wow. Um, some of the things that she did were, were that were bad habits. I corrected in my life. Mm -hmm. Some of the things that were her good habits I, I adopted. Mm -hmm. So uh, I could say my mother was my best role model for her good and bad qualities. Mm -hmm. I like it. And that's pretty big because, you know, we see our parents like, oh, I'm not going to do that. And then sometimes we kind of get in where we do a couple of the things and we catch ourselves and, you know, want to change it. But the mm -hmm. good and bad of it all helps us to be who we are because they did the best that they knew how to do. And right. now we have knowledge. We try to do the best we know. Mm -hmm. Exactly. But Stacey, you said you didn't like marriage wasn't necessary in the future for you. Why do you think that? Uh, I didn't say, well, I don't know. I just didn't think about it like that. Like right. it just, you know, it wasn't like something that was on the forefront when I was younger. I think I was mm -hmm. just really focused on myself. And then, um, it came a time where, you know, I decided to settle down mm -hmm. and, uh, yeah, it was a good choice. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, I was, I was yeah. I know people always say, oh, I want to get married. Oh, I want to do this. I want to be, you know, a rock star and all that. I just never really had those visions. Like I, I always had leadership, a leadership drive, but mm -hmm. marriage wasn't uh, one of those things that was like first or foremost for me. Like I didn't I, think about it. But yeah. And that's a good thing to note because 
one, everybody doesn't get married, right? Um, yeah. And some do have the mindset of if it happens, it happens. If it doesn't, it doesn't. You still on your grind yeah. and do what you have to do for life because life is mm-hmm. still going on, you know? Um, mm-hmm. But if it does happen, as you share for you, it was a great decision. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It, it is. It was. <laughs> mm-hmm. And we kind of did it old fashioned style, if you will, because when we, we knew each other from grade school, Okay. But when we got together, we actually dated for two years mm-hmm. and then we moved in together for a year and a half. And then my daughter was on the way. So then we, we decided to go ahead and marry before she was born. Okay. And in that time, they used to call it courtship. Mm-hmm. We were learning each other. We got to see while we were dating mm-hmm. what you know, what each of us was like at this age, because, you know, when you go to grade school together, you don't know nothing but just having fun. Yeah. So, you know, as uh, young adults, you know, we wanted to learn each other and we took that time to do that. And then you figure we moved to the next stage, which was move in together to kind of see, OK, am I going to be able to wake up to this in the next 40, 50 years? And, and, and you learn your good qualities, your bad qualities, bad habits and things of that nature. And you figure in doing that, it wasn't so much of the the physical nature that um, strengthened our relationship. It was the fact of getting to know each other inside and out. Mm -hmm. You know, all of those, like I said, good qualities, not so good qualities and knowing, okay, I can deal with this for the next 40, 50, 60 years. As opposed to jumping into a relationship and then, oh, you know, I can't stand you. And it's only been in six months into the relationship. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I like this um, because sometimes the physical do- does take over because then we got on rose colored glasses and we really don't mm-hmm. know the person. And I like the balance mm-hmm. of you still finding out who the person is. Um, yeah. And that's the part that I try to hone in on with so many people of really one knowing who you are. Because if we don't know who you yeah. are, you can express that to somebody else. So what was that process for you in finding out who you were individually and then coming together as one? Okay. No, you well, go. Um, I think because, again, my life story, mm-hmm. um, I started out a really troubled individual. Mm-hmm. And I didn't like the path that I was going down. So I made a conscious choice to learn who I was and where my place was. Mm -hmm. And once I figured out, you know, what I was capable of, uh, what I wanted to do, what I didn't want to do, what are the things I wanted to refrain from, it kind of helped me to set my, my standards for myself, mm-hmm. you know, in a sense of um, my morals, you know, I, I won't go out there and, you know, rob the little old lady on the first of the month because how is she going to survive after that? Now, I know a lot of people don't have strong morals, mm-hmm. but when you figure out who you are and what you will do, what you're capable of, and what you want to stay away from, it helps you to guide yourself through your own path. And that stability of knowing that kind of helps you to be able to choose a decent person when you go looking for a partner. Mm -hmm. Again, knowing what you will accept, what you won't accept. So, you know, some of the things that people be like, well, you know, I'm looking at this woman and, you know, in 50 years, she's not going to look like that. Am I still going to want to be with her? You know, well, you get to know stuff like that about yourself, what you will accept and what you won't accept. Mm -hmm. But if you don't know who you are, you you can't be your full potential for yourself or for your partner. Mm -hmm. Any thoughts, Stacey? Uh, What was the question again? Talking about, you know, finding yourself before you join it with someone else, that process. Oh, well, mine, I think I just found myself probably 10 years ago. (laughs) Um, And the reason why is uh, maturity, I guess. Mm -hmm. So um, I can honestly say now I know who I am. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm confident in who I am. I know who Rodney is. And um, that's, yeah, it's a maturity thing. Everybody thinks that, you know, 
things happen by age, but really sometimes it takes just a level of uh, experiences and maturity. And, and like I said, I would say probably about 10 years ago, I really just, I can honestly say that I really figured out who I was and what I wanted to do. Mm-hmm. And I'm 55. And that's real. Uh, every day we're evolving and changing and hoping that, do I like what I like yesterday? Oh, I don't like it anymore. I like this yeah. now. Uh, when yeah. I was used to Brussels sprouts, I was like, oh, this is good. Why was I ignoring it all my life? So it's like the simple mm-hmm. thing to find out, oh, okay, I like this. Yeah. Or no, I yeah. don't like this, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Process. Yeah. yeah. That's a process. That's good. Uh, okay. I saw this post the other day was sharing how this couple was married. Mm-hmm. And she went through an experience where um, she was burned in her or her face. And she was, you know, becoming unple- unpleasing to the eye, she felt. And she mm-hmm. was like, you know, my husband's still going to want me. Is he still going to think I'm beautiful? Is he going to want to be with me? And mm-hmm. he had went away to the war. And when he came back, he came back as if he was blind. When mm-hmm. he came back, so, you know, he's still loving her. He can't see any difference. It appears. And then years mm-hmm. go on, she passes. And they're like, you know, how are you going to survive with your wife being gone? He was, mm-hmm. you know, she did everything or she did these things. And he was like, I can see. I came mm-hmm. back because I didn't want her to think less of her, knowing that I could see how she was. I still loved her. She was, you know, everything I wanted her to be. Wow. And then that knowing yourself or being present, that humility mm-hmm. that comes of falling back uh, was pretty mm-hmm. big. And in that story or hearing about that, of the sacrifice mm-hmm. you're willing to make for love, but that comes from maturity mm-hmm. and knowing what it is that you want to be with. Mm-hmm. Yes. And a lot of people don't really know, well, their interpretation of love sometimes is so far off that it's like when, when you talk to them and they tell you what they believe love is, it's like, <laughs> really? Yeah. Are, are you serious? <laughs> and for me, I, I the way I tell people love is, Love is when you think more of your partner than you do of yourself. Yeah. When you wake up in the morning, the first thing, and when you go to sleep, the last thing, if it's of your partner and their health or their well-being or the, that they're just okay mentally, that's when you know that you love a person. Mm. Mm. That's a good one. Because you want the uh, best for them. Yes. yes. Mm-hmm. And that can yeah. sometimes feel hard because it's like it doesn't always agree with what you want all the time. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Sometimes it can hurt a little bit in a sense yeah. of trying to make you better, trying to make you stronger. I love mm-hmm. you. I don't want you to go out and spend all the money because we got to pay this bill. I know you yeah. like it. Right. <laughs> <laughs> first. And that could be yeah. an interesting walk. Mm-hmm. So, that when disagreements come, what have you learned that helps you to fight fair? Because sometimes, you know, people get into arguments and they're like, you know, throwing in a towel is done, it's over. Um, mm-hmm. But that's not always the times that we do that. Sometimes it is mm-hmm. that tough love of, I love mm-hmm. you, we got to do this. Or mm-hmm. what has been helpful in that area? Because I feel like a lot of times, again, people get into situations and be like, oh, it didn't work, I'm going. And sometimes you can really mm-hmm. work it out for us to be amazing. Well, I I can say the one thing that we have made a promise to each other is that we never go to bed angry at each other. Mm -hmm. Now, yes, we have broken that promise a couple of times, Mm -hmm. but but with respect to that, most of the times we'll have a argument, if you will, Mm -hmm. and we kind of we kind of reside to our own corners for a little while Mm -hmm. to let it cool down. And then we come back and discuss. And sometimes you just agree to disagree. You know, Mm -hmm. what I think might not be what works for you and what you think might not be what works for me. So Mm -hmm. it's a give and take. Sometimes, sometimes I just give in just because I don't want to fight no more. Mm -hmm. It don't mean that I believe I was wrong. It just means I don't want to fight no more. Mm-hmm. And I'll just let her have it. Mm-hmm. So, you know, that's one of those things, again, about love. Do you want to be arguing with your, with your, no, mm-hmm. I want smile and happiness as much as uh, that as I can get. So sometimes you just bite your teeth and, you know, just give it up. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It took me a long time to get there because I always had to have my way. Mm-hmm. So I would hold out the longest. Some years ago, I would hold out the longest. And then he would come around and be like, all right, how long are you going to be like this? Mm-hmm. So 
Yeah, it's it's the transition. Yeah, we used to sometimes used to go longer than that when we were younger. Oh yeah. Yeah, we were terrible. But <laughs> well, that's the truth. Mm-hmm. But um as we you know been together these all these years, now it's just like we don't even argue now. It's more like mm-hmm. really mm-hmm. or we go to like mm-hmm. you know, like five or ten minutes will go by and then I'll go and be like, You all right? <laughs> like I go now, but before he used to come to me, now I'm the one like, is he all right? Mm-hmm. And he's like, I was waiting for you to come back. So mm-hmm. it's a maturity, it's, <laughs> it's a maturity thing. And mm-hmm. so now we honestly don't argue. We do get upset with each other. We have a mm-hmm. little spats, but that's what you want to call it. Yeah. They don't even um, let. It's like one, once we realize who was at fault, which mm-hmm. is pretty easy. It's like okay, we we got to do better. So it's so much, it's a maturity thing Yeah. when it comes to, to arguments, but it is healthy to have them. Absolutely. It is healthy to have, yeah, it's, yeah. Quite, it's, it's not like, okay, we don't argue because no, yeah, we do. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it's healthy to have that because there's a balance in the relationship, mm-hmm. to, in my yeah. opinion. Yeah. yeah. You're always, you're yeah, always you got to have those, in, yes. especially for the makeup time. Oh yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> Oh yeah. Well, you're always going to have those differences of opinion because you're you're two separate individuals. So sometimes you're going to be at the opposite end of the situation, and it's just like, well, I'm not going to agree with everything that you have to say. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, people actually asked me one time. I said, "How often do you and your wife fight?" Because my me and my wife fight like every weekend or something. I said, "Uh, maybe twice a year." Mm-hmm. Do we have like the real argument where we'll, mm-hmm. we'll have to? I'll go in one room, she'll go in the other room, and then maybe half an hour later or so, <laughs> then we come back together. But I mean, like again, once you know your partner mm-hmm. to the best of your ex- ability, it makes it easy with understanding where they're coming from. Yeah, that's good. Now, how many years have you been together? Thirty-one together. Uh, um, uh, uh, she said together. Okay. <laughs> We've been together 30. <laughs> We've been together almost 35 years. And how long have you known each other? Oh, geez. Oh, grade so school, grade sixth, school. Sixth, fifth grade, sixth grade. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, again, that is really like sticking, in, sticking to it, you know, and yeah. y'all got to stick to it in this. To be able to really learn each other in these days, or where it could be to you know disagreements in the air, and for sure arguments yeah. help us grow because if you don't like it, you don't like it. Speak on it because if not, yeah. they keep on doing it. Like I don't know why they keep on doing it. I don't like it. They they don't know yeah. you don't like. It. They have to be able yeah. to share that. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. But that's pretty cool for two, and to be able to encourage somebody else that you know we don't do it that many times. You know it doesn't happen. Um, mm-hmm. But again, that it will happen, but it's all a process, all in the process of learning the other person, learning, mm-hmm. you know, their intent. Because sometimes, again, we perceive things wrong, miscommunication, um, mm-hmm. and things of that sort. But I like what you said, Rodney, too, of like, you know, I don't want to argue anymore. It's not about winning. Sometimes, like, mm-hmm. keeping peace. Yes, we disagree. Yes. Let's keep yep. mm-hmm. You still love me. I still love you. The makeup and y'all going on with your business. Yeah. Yep. How many children do you have? You said your parents, right? Yeah. Yes. Two. Did you always expect to be a mom and a dad? Like, how was that process um, adding children to the mix? Mm, it was a good thing. Uh, well, yeah, it was a good thing, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I'm going to be honest. I think right now we're going through a a transition uh, mm-hmm. because our daughter does not. She pretty much cut us off abruptly. Okay. Because she thought we were overbearing, mm-hmm. so we are, do not have access to our grandson. So that this real talk mm-hmm. and uh, um, our son, he was killed in a car accident several years ago. So we think a lot of that has to do with the dynamics of, you know, things that are happening now. Mm-hmm. So, gotcha. yeah, but um, we do, we do have two children, uh, a son and a daughter uh, and a grandson that just turned mm-hmm. 10. Yep. 10 Monday. Oh, very nice. Yeah. So 
Yeah. Do you feel like when you had children, it changed the dynamics of your union? Mm, no. No. Mm-mm. no, we were already pretty close by the time um, my daughter came. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it didn't really change it, but when when our daughter did leave home, it did change, change our it. unit mm-hmm. because mm-hmm. It, we, we were able to get back to being able to just pick up and go when we got good and ready to go mm-hmm. on vacation without worrying about uh, do we have to take them? Do we have to have, find a babysitter or anything like that? So we just gained our freedom back. But as far as our union, mm-hmm. no, the ch- children really the didn't change. They were still the same. No. And that's good because some couples, they feel like it, it changes a little bit. But then again, yeah. when that empty nest syndrome comes, it sounds like mm-hmm. you guys are fine with a little bit of like, yay, you know, yeah. Fine. Yeah. in life. Yes, kind yeah. of rediscovering each other. Yeah. yeah, and allowing allowing um, our daughter to have her own life. Mm-hmm. So it has. Been, I guess you could say, yeah, it's been an adjustment. Yeah, okay. it's an adjustment. Yeah. yeah, but it hasn't changed our union. It hasn't changed the union between Rod and I. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. What do you yeah. think's helped you to stay for those that may be having trouble in that area? What words of advice would you give to them of? Um, finding themselves as their children are growing up and going on in life. Mm -hmm. Uh, To learn to let go. Mm -hmm. At one one point, they have to realize that they were their child's age at one point. Mm -hmm. And we have to learn to allow them to develop just as we did. Mm -hmm. I think that's the hardest part. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It was a transition for me. So it was not an overnight thing because you want to hold on to them forever. Mm-hmm. But uh, letting go and allowing them to grow, mm-hmm. that's, that's the hardest part. And once you do it, which is what, what we're doing now, mm-hmm. um, I think things will fall into place. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's the hardest part. Yeah. Allowing them to be who they are yes. and grow. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You can't save them. <laughs> yeah, it's difficult because you figure you've had your hands on them and in their lives for mm-hmm. 18 years and then to not be that that uh, constant daily guidance mm-hmm. for them. And mm-hmm. it, 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 it it is a scary thing, but they have to find their way in life because if you don't let them go, they'll be dependent on you for the rest of their lives. Yeah. And make their mistakes. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So true, so true. I remember um, when I went away to school, um, I still was connected to my mom, but it was an adjustment of me learning who I was without mom, trying Mm -hmm. not to call mom for everything. I had to figure it out on my own. And Mm -hmm. as many times as I might have cried myself to sleep, but how I'm going to make this dollar or five dollars last the rest of this week, Mm -hmm. um, trying to get that independence because being independent, it's nice. I ain't going to hold you. It was nice Mm -hmm. when I had to figure out some things, but Mm -hmm become independent it also gives you a sense of pride as well that you can handle some things but mm-hmm. it does some falling and some getting back up again uh um, yeah yeah you guys say that's come full circle when she finds her way to be able mm-hmm. to all love never overbearing yes. but yes yes mm-hmm. yeah yeah because that could be a challenge Yes. <laughs> we remember when we was young, I didn't always like what they was doing. And I wanted to do something different too sometimes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And we try to save our children sometimes from things that we went through, but mm-hmm. that's not how it works. And uh, so, yeah, it's a learning process. Mm-hmm. But I think the hardest thing, especially with our culture, mm-hmm. is that, um, you know, we have a lot of things that we were brainwashed with. Mm-hmm. That should be traditions, and I think we have to adjust to a lot of that. And that's yeah, some things you. we're learning as parents that a lot of things we're brain been brainwashed to do for so many years, mm-hmm. not out of um, not on purpose, but just mm-hmm. that, just because that's all that our ancestors and grandparents and parents knew. Yes. So we have to learn how to adjust with what things are going on today. Yeah, and yeah. for parents. It's very hard to do that because when you've been doing something for so long and traditions and and things, it's hard to break that. So 
as parents from the parental part, we have learned that. Mm-hmm. We've learned that we had to adjust ourselves. Yeah. So, yeah. So we're hoping that, you know, our daughter realizes that, um, you know, that's, that's, we were doing that, but she just, she didn't, she couldn't wait. <laughs> so. it's, it's my society as well, right? We want to quit fasting in a hurry. Fast food, we gotta yeah. go. Nobody yeah. wants to that that yeah. With Thanksgiving, yeah. you want that turkey to stay in so it's done. Yeah. You know, people want something faster, so they'll do yeah. a lunch meat turkey because I can eat it right now. But it's a different. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yes. If you bake that thing. So, yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. That's good. Thank you for your transparency because there's a lot of um, families out here that are having that challenge of their children. Yes. Like going astray, I guess is the word they might say, but that's what it feels yeah. like for them. But they mm-hmm. do have to come out on their own how to do this thing called mm-hmm. life. And um, like the prodigal son, they do come back. Um, yeah. Either did work or didn't work, but either way, still opening um, open arms to receive them back. Mm-hmm. It's a so the hope is that when they do return, that um, they're received with love and well wishes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And we needed to hear that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> because when emotions surface, you're like, you know, you're going back and forth mm-hmm. with reality, your spiritual, yeah. you know, balance. And it's like, you know, what should I do? Should I just like do the same thing? And then, no. Yeah. We need to, yeah. We just need to let the emotions. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh huh. Yeah. So. Should I do the same thing? Because we all be petty, right? It's like, oh, yeah. you think you got yeah. hard? Go ahead out yeah. there and see what it is. Um, yeah. Right. In love, right? Because that's the, yeah. you know, you want the best for them. Um, yeah. Within reason, of course, you know. Yeah. But showing them, like, you know, I still got your back. It's going to work out. Mm-hmm. Okay. Right? Yep. Too, you know, were you being transparent of? I tried to. It didn't work out for me. I'm glad that you found this way. This is what worked for me. Or this yes. is what made me try of offering that support. Really mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so another part we I wanted to sh- highlight or speak on is the individuality of you both. So mm-hmm. though you come together as one, you're still Stacy. You're still Rodney. How do you work to still maintain who you are by also being one, united? Uh, we never overstep our boundaries. We respect each other's uh, purpose, mm-hmm. uh, gifts. Uh, Careers, bank accounts, mm-hmm. uh, <laughs> thought process. Thought process. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're very good at that. Yeah. Okay. So we've we've kept that, and it it, it works. Right. Yeah. Right. We find some, some things when it comes to things that we do together, um, but that again comes with maturity. Mm-hmm. But we've mm-hmm. always allowed each other to keep our own individuality. Yeah. Um, because that's what makes us who we are and that's what makes us happy individually and as a unit. Yeah. Yeah. Now, even though sometimes we may make suggestions to each other, um, we, we will respect that. Again, we are individuals. Mm -hmm. She does things a certain way. I do things a certain way. And even though I'll be honest, her way usually is more effective (laughs) <laughs> my way just works for me. So sometimes I might have to do something two or three times where she says, well, if you had to did it this way, you would only had to do it once. And now you can be off doing something else. Well, sometimes I just enjoy mm-hmm. being me. Yes. Mm-hmm. And I've adjusted to that because I realized that that's something that he likes to do and that works for him. Mm-hmm. So it's not for me to always come in and fine tune. Mm-hmm. That's just what he likes. So I've allowed him to do what he likes. Mm-hmm. So if he wants to do it over and over, why not? that's what he likes. Yeah, because sometimes we want to fix things, and but we should allow a person to be who they are because that could it could be a, a therapy for someone. And we may not realize that sometimes, you know? Yeah. So... You know, just respecting that boundary that everybody does things differently. Yeah. And that was a weakness of mine. It's like, oh, well, you could do this better or this is it. But sometimes people have to do it mm-hmm. in their own way, which is going back to our daughter. Mm-hmm. That was that was a flaw of mine because I wanted to make sure she did it the right way the first time because I knew it. So yeah. taking the hands off, same thing with Rod. I had to learn to back off mm-hmm. because they're their own person. 
Yeah. Just like I'm a bad person. So mm-hmm. that's so important because sometimes that, that does ruin a relationship mm-hmm. because a person doesn't respect that person's boundary. Yes. And allow them to be and do the things that they like to do. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And we've kind of learned each other's uh, triggers mm. and respect those triggers. Mm-hmm. But we've also kind of got a mutual understanding. I mean, every every woman knows when when they say the look, what that means. That, that means okay, you you crossing my line and you need to back back down. Mm-hmm. Well, we have both acquired that. There's times where she get to going off the deep end, and I'll stop, get quiet, and give her the look, and she knows okay, I, I need to leave him alone and let him do what he's doing. So again, that goes to learning your partner mm-hmm. and having that mutual understanding that, okay, if he's giving me that look or she's giving me that look, it means I'm crossing into a boundary mm-hmm. that I need to make a stop for. And we usually will instantly, when we see that look, stop. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But, okay, I, I hear you and yeah. go on about your business. Yeah. So we and respect it, the individuality a lot. Mm-hmm. It's yeah. important. Yeah, we don't lose ourselves. So we know when it's me time and when it's us time. Yes. And and that's a constant. That should go from beginning to end mm-hmm. in a relationship in the yes. in a marriage. Yeah. yeah. The last thing you want to do is lose yourself within the relationship because when you lose your individuality, a part of you gets altered mm-hmm. that could end up altering the relationship yeah yeah and you don't want that to happen no, no. no. the hope Especially is that- not if you have a relationship yes. that works mm-hmm. yes yes yeah i like that i've known the triggers and the looks and things because um that's going beyond just listening but really paying attention to body language because sometimes yeah. you know, me saying something like, are they even reading the room? Like, don't they see that we not, you know, <laughs> um, and seeing like, all right, I went too far. Let me just chill and we play. Cause even in playing, mm-hmm. like you're playing and joking around things a certain day. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right. yeah. yeah. <laughs> you can say all right, and it mean different things. We're like, all right, yeah. 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 Like, yeah. Yeah. we're good at that. Yeah. Now. Yeah. We're very good at that now. Cause sometimes she'd be saying stuff <laughs> like, and I'd be like, okay, woman, you're starting to get in my nerves. All I gotta turn and look at her. And she knows, oh, all right, that's mm-hmm. that's that. Let me shut it down and go on about my way. Yeah. Or we could be somewhere publicly and it's like I don't want you to say that. So we'd be like, mm-hmm. we'll give each other a good, good look. And it's like, oh, shut oh, it down. No. <laughs> Chill. Yeah, let's speak of that. You still in the public, right? So how does yeah. that work of uh, still being respectful, but letting them know? Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, or, or, or her. Or her. Because sometimes, or you know, you, when you, yeah. so sometimes, you know, when you get in a situation, if emotions, start to rise mm-hmm. you might start going in a direction that don't really need to be traveled so sometimes i see i can see the smoke coming out of ears i'll look go over and give her the look and it's like okay lady mm-hmm. that's it mm-hmm. so come on yeah. and she'll get the she'll get the picture be like okay and sometimes she'll mm-hmm. stand behind me and let me take the lead mm-hmm. so that she don't go off the deep end. Yes. <laughs> so, but again, that like you said, that goes to learning the body language, knowing each other, but mm-hmm. also knowing ourselves. And, and when we're going to reach that level, it's like, I'm getting ready to go there. Let me take a step back and mm-hmm. let the other person take the lead. Yeah. And we kind of have gotten to the point where we know almost instinctively when the other person is backing down to go ahead and take point. Yeah. Yeah. Maturity. Yeah. 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 Now, now in my example, I did say, you know, how to let him know, and I, it does go both ways, but more so saying because respect is a big thing for them, for man, for the man, right? Yeah. Um, yes. So she can be irritated, agitated, but still want to be respectful to you in public. So sharing yeah. that with others that are, you know, tuning in because Sometimes we think that's not important. Yes, respect is oh, both yes. important on both sides. Yes. But it is a little different sometimes for the female and for the male. We agree? Mm-hmm. Well, I, no, no, no. I think it's it's mutual. Mm-hmm. You give 
what you want to receive mm -hmm. on the same level. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I, I can say in this relationship, you know, no relationship is going to be equal 50-50. That's, mm -hmm. that's just unheard of. But when it comes to the respect, mm -hmm. we each respect each other 50-50. Mm -hmm. There is no, you know, she gets more respect or I get more respect. Or, no, we are equal. We are both a king and a queen. Mm -hmm. When when I'm here, at uh, when we're together, I, I might take point on something and lead. Mm -hmm. And then sometimes she'll take point and I don't disrespect her or slow her down or hinder her. If she feels as though this is something that's strong for her, she takes point, I back down. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's equal for us, a 50-50 as far as that. I don't feel as though a man should be more respected than a woman. And you know, that's that's ego. That's all that is, ego. And I'm not one of those guys that has a big ego and feel like I got to be the man, 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 man. No, no, no. no. And that goes to the point that I was trying to pull out of, um, you know, they say the man is the head of the household, right? Hey, the man also should be still respectful to the woman as well because if you're doing something that's odd and you're wondering why she acting this way, what did you possibly do or how did you encourage that? And the same mm -hmm. for you know the wife of you know what's going on that's causing it to be all. So yes, respect definitely agree both ways because you know and that love that you have, I want to make you look good when we out in public, just like you make yes, me. Yes, that's it. Yeah. that's it. And then Matthew, mm -hmm. you told me um you should probably put this on. And I'm a listen because you know I want to make sure I'm looking right because we want to represent yeah. each other well. Um, yeah. so it because that's important for couples to know across the board that the hope is that you respect each other. If you really mm -hmm. love yeah. you respect yeah. another person for each other, and that was the point. So thank you for helping yeah. me bring out. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I've, I've never looked at that head man as head of the household. That's kind of like outdated to me because a, a, a king. What is a king without a queen? Mm. And vice versa. No, we run this household. When I'm here, I run it. When she's here, she runs it. When we're here together, we run it. Mm -hmm. Now, again, you're talking about that and like maturity. <laughs> Very much so. Very much so. Yeah. Now, yeah. I will say this. When it comes to, if you want to look at the, it's not so much um, the man has to be respected as the head of household, but the man should be respected as the protector of the household. I don't expect her to throw hands up and defend this house when I'm here. That's my job. Okay. But by the same token, she runs this house with certain things that I just don't involve myself with, like decorating. I'm not the decorator. <laughs> she decorates. I'll build. We each have our own, you know, uh, skill. skill on that end. But when it comes to the actual house, we run this house. Mm -hmm. And I don't feel like I have to step on her and she doesn't feel like she has to step on me at, at any point with anything. Mm -hmm. That's important um, of knowing the balance, communicating what their dynamic yes. looks like and also finding out what works for your household. Um, yes. yes. Growing up, we were taught, you know, like what happens in my house stays in my house, right? Yes. So what happens at your house is working for your house and things of sort. I mean, when something is, is off, we, you know, have a conversation about that. But unfortunately, unfortunately, sometimes social media has allowed us to share a little bit more about what's going on in our homes. And mm -hmm. then people are like, why is she doing that? Or why are you doing it? Like, why can't you? Yes. 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 Exactly. Yes. Yes, that's that is a, for me. That is a downfall of social media. It it allows a platform that gives too much insight into a person's personal life, mm -hmm. and uh, you know I hate to say, but a lot of the younger generation they feel like they don't get the attention that they need unless they're showing something of a personal nature. Like you said, what happens in these walls stays in these walls unless I choose to share it. But the rest of the world don't care if your husband done made you some cereal first thing in the morning, <laughs> you know, or, or, or vacuumed the floor. No, that's between you and him. Mm -hmm. But social media is just, you know, I can put out there, I wouldn't have this at this restaurant. Who cares? <laughs> it's just too much. And within reason, because granted, like, yeah, if you're sharing like a new restaurant, let me know, like, yeah, let's go check that out. But sometimes right. it's 
so much detail. Oh, I just went to the bathroom. Oh, I just you know stubbed my toe. Oh, exactly. Yes. It can become yeah. overwhelming. Some people become addicted to it. Of like, I gotta mm -hmm. tell people. I gotta tell people. I have to put on this front. And again, when that camera is off, when that picture is done. What's going on in real life? Because life is continuing to go on. The hope is that yeah, exactly. If nobody mm -hmm. else, exactly. And a lot of times, what I've seen on social media is okay. That's all fine and dandy, but what's going on when the camera does go off? Your life ain't probably ain't what you presenting on that camera. <laughs> you showing all the good highlights and whatnot, but then you go home go home miserable. Yeah. So yeah, you're not really showing what really is, and I know. Social media can keep the social media. <laughs> and that's the hard part because like they'll hashtag relationship goals and feel like, oh, I want to be like them. But you don't know the blood, sweat, and tears that went through to get oh, there. Oh, yes. Oh, my years God. in with maybe two arguments in a year, they don't know the blood, sweat, and tears that went into a, maybe I'm mm -hmm. not leave her. Maybe I should leave her. Is she really the one? Is he really the one? Because you go through those battles sometimes in the beginning. Like, did I make a good decision? Especially if they uh -huh. grow the way you're trying to help you to grow to who you need to be. He was like, I ain't, exactly. ask her. I ain't asked her. But through the process, you found out. The process. The yes. Exactly. Well, I, I will say this, and we have said this many times before. We as a couple have been through just about every scenario that would have and and has broken other relationships. Mm -hmm. Everything. Everything, loss of a child. Mm -hmm. uh, we, you know, our daughter pretty much just shut us out. Mm -hmm. uh, financial problems, mm -hmm. uh, inf infidelity. infidelity yeah. uh, uh, you know, family issues. We have been through everything, everything. and and by the grace of, of God, yeah, He has kept us together. This is what it looks like. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it, it's not all daisies and roses. Yeah. It's, uh, it's, it has been blood, sweat, and tears, mm -hmm. literally, to keep a marriage together for 31 years. And be soulmates. And be soulmates. And be soulmates. And that's big because, uh, again, somebody would have gave up one week. Actually, some people have given up one week. Some people have given up yeah. one day, you know, one mm -hmm. month year um so mm -hmm. to have been able to make it that long and be committed and say like i still like you yeah it's big and like but, it's big but again huh? but again you got to go back to the beginning which is where i said you have to learn you then you have to learn your partner mm -hmm. once you do that it makes it easy because if you pick somebody who has bad habits that you can deal with you're not likely to leave them 20 years later over that bad habit. Mm -hmm. you, you already know what type of person they are. What happens is people jump into the re these relationships, they get physical, and the physical holds them together until bad habits show up. And then, you know, I can't stand looking at that. I can't, he snores or, or he walks around barefoot. Or what. But you should have known that from day one. Mm -hmm. before you got serious mm -hmm. and a lot of relationships don't make it because they don't learn each other earlier enough before they get serious into the relationship mm -hmm. and yeah. i wonder if their perception is serious because you know again physical feel like oh it's serious but you don't uh, know the person it's not serious so it's a facade exactly. it's, like it's more than what it really is yeah you know, you know this person yeah. exactly yeah. Interesting enough, when we got married, uh, we did a justice of the peace so that we could be married before my daughter was born. Mm -hmm. The judge actually said, if y'all are still married in five years, come back and see me. And we didn't understand what he meant by that. But after the longevity of our relationship, we looked at each other one day and we said, I get it now because mm -hmm. there are marriages that don't last a six year, months, a years. year or a year. And, and now we get it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah, that's a process. So speaking of the justice of the peace, let's talk about this for a second. How did your family receive you going to the justice of the peace? Did they want you to have like a big wedding? Were they okay with it? Um, no. Okay. Yeah. No. They were okay with it, especially when we told them that we wanted to be married before our daughter was born. Mm -hmm. They understood that. Very nice. And that's good yeah. to be supported because there's some people that are getting married that don't have support. Not that um, 
Not that you need support, right? Because if mm-hmm. the two come together and they feel like they want to get married, but it right. it's nice that you have somebody in your corner, things of that sort. Um, but if you don't, people are surviving as well and going yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Yeah, but we want to have a yeah. We uh, did have big a big wedding. wedding for our 15 year anniversary. Yeah. So we yeah. did. We did actually have. Yeah, it. a big one. <laughs> <laughs> well, all the family was there, so that was exciting. Yeah. yeah very so, nice. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, that that's pretty big because sometimes people are fearful of going to the justice of the peace or. Uh, they're shamed for whatever reason that they chose. I said, mm-hmm. y'all mess around me. I'll be the eloped. And then I came back and be like, bye out. You know? Uh-huh. There it is. Uh-huh. Exactly. You got to do what works for you. Yes. You got to do what yeah. works for you. That's mm-hmm. funny. That's funny. Um, <laughs> but knowing each other is so, so, so important. Um, dating stages, even as, you know, you go through. And then speaking of that, dating, how often do you do dates, you know, going out and things of that sort. How important is it for you to do those things beyond um, respecting the boundaries and things of that sort, but still having those moments together? How important would you say that is? Oh, important. Oh, we just had a date the other night. Very, very. We we What's one today? of the Monday. things. Monday. Yeah, one of the things <laughs> that helps with the longevity of a, a long term relationship or marriage is to keep the spark that mm-hmm. brought you together. You went on a first date, you went on seconds, thirds, fourth, fifth. But then when people get married, they forget to date each other. We actually date each other at least once a month. Mm-hmm. Now, that's what we just call an official date. But believe it or not, many nights we spend the evening together. We might be watching like our, our favorite show because there's a couple of shows that we like to watch together. And we do that every night. Mm-hmm. Almost every night, I should say. We don't watch TV every night, but Mm -hmm. we're always doing something together Mm -hmm. each night. But then we'll set a date and call it date night, which really isn't that much different than what we do any other time. We just want to give it a label. Like the other night, we went went to Burger King. Yeah, we went. We went. went, went, uh huh. (laughs) Yep, we we sat at Burger King like a couple of kids. kids. And and had the best of times. We it, it don't always have to be something expensive and extravagant. I mean, like you said, you know, the we watched. Oh, came. we did. We went to. Uh, we had a date Sunday. We mm-hmm. actually went to um, Plymouth Meeting on one of the farms in White Marsh and watched the sunrise. Yeah. So Sunday yeah, morning, those are yeah. things that we do. Yeah. 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 And then sometimes uh, we'll 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 pack a bag, mm-hmm. get in the car, and drive like on a weekend until mm-hmm. we don't feel like driving no more, find a place to stay mm-hmm. and stay somewhere overnight and just kind of see whatever's in that area the next day and then come on home. Yes. Yeah. We do I all like kinds of Bike ride. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. yeah. All that good stuff. <laughs> the part that I love yeah, is we, we date a lot. <laughs> yes, we date, we date a lot. Wow. And, um, you know, I, I talked to a lot of couples and some of you can kind of really see like their vibes and things. Not saying that the other couples don't love each other, but mm-hmm. you, you also could just like feel like the good energy and things of that sort where you two really do enjoy being together. Again, not saying mm-hmm. anything is perfect, but you genuinely still enjoy being together. Like the day you're like, oh, yeah, oh, we did yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> like, even that oh, fire yeah. is really, really important. Mm-hmm. Now, I'll tell you this. When the pandemic hit, so many people at work I know came came to work miserable. Mm-hmm. I was like, I don't know what's wrong with y'all. I'm having a ball, especially <laughs> when they shut us down. I was home with my boo for, yeah, we for two weeks straight. We, we used to walk around outside. the house outside. <laughs> that that to me was some of the best time. What? I ain't got to go to work. Okay. Yeah, we were happy. Yeah, because people don't give them a chance to stay home with their loved ones. Yes. Mm-hmm. So what? I mean, it wasn't a good time, but mm-hmm. what better time to be home with your loved ones and get to spend that time that you don't when you're yeah. at work and school or traveling or whatever? Yeah. What? Like people that. talked about. Oh, some of them said, "Oh, well, I rekindled my marriage." No, I didn't rekindle <laughs> nothing. I just got to enjoy it more. <laughs> You know, I think it was, you know, so they knowing each other, right? Because when mm-hmm. life was happening before the pandemic, you know, you're just busy doing life and you mm-hmm. yeah. it's like, you know, it's yeah. what we but with the pandemic kind of shut us down, so it doesn't like, wait, you do that? What? Right. Yeah. You forgot who you were living with. 
They balance you out. When you came home, you were sweet as pie. Now you got a little tension. You need to go see some people. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, goodness. It was interesting. Some made it, some did not make it. Cause it I know. Crazy. Yeah. Well, we made it. Yep. <laughs> and then tell a story, laugh about it, enjoy about it. Um, and that's really cool. And the hope is that others find that joy in doing the simple things of life. You know, they had a young lady who was saying like it was too much to go to the Cheesecake Factory. Says you want to be happy that the person want to spend time with you in whatever capacity. Oh, I heard about it. Mm-hmm. Because the only place that's open now, granted, it, we all have restaurants that we prefer not to go to. Mm-hmm. We, uh-huh. we just didn't like the food. Um, mm-hmm. the hope is that if that's all that was in the budget to do, and that's a big thing too, mm-hmm. I think for young couples that are dating, sometimes they have high expectations of how it should look, what it should be, and it, like you mm-hmm. said, it doesn't have to be expensive. And sometimes you're robbing Peter to pay Paul, and then we're not yeah. going no further than this one day. I just spent exactly. all this money. This or um, so knowing what the main thing is, and the main thing is really getting to know this person. Do I see myself with this person years from now, um, mm-hmm. or should we end today? And we could find that yeah. out over coffee, walking around a house in the park or something. Um, yeah, if we take that moment to really get to know the person, we don't invest mm-hmm. sometimes. I think the first date should be simplistic, uh, nothing over the top. Mm-hmm. Uh, even if it's something where they get their favorite hoagie or something or something that they mm-hmm. like and yes. a drink and then maybe the next date, then they go to a nice restaurant and then escalate from that point. That mm-hmm. way, if neither one is disappointed. They're not out of pocket. Yeah. Then you really get to see the person for who they are. Because if you want to start at the top, mm-hmm. it's to me, the Cheesecake Factory is like, oh, okay. Yeah, you, you might be high maintenance. Date. I might not be able I mean, to afford how, you. But I'm just saying, like, the basics. We, we forget about the basics. See, mm-hmm. we've, we've been brainwashed, and I use that word a lot because that's what I think it is. Mm-hmm. That Oh, sorry. That we should, um, like you said, have all these expectations. Mm-hmm. You really want to really get to know the person. Yeah. Not the restaurant. Not what's in their pocket. The per- not what's in their pocket. Yeah. Yeah. Because you want to start from the foundation, and the foundation may not have all that. Right. And if you can't live with that, then you can't go to the top. Right. Mm-hmm. Because you can be at the top and fall right back down. You got to be mm-hmm. able to work back yes. up. So right. I think a lot of relationships now they want to start in the middle and go right to the top. Forget about the bottom. Like no, mm-hmm. you have to start at the bottom. The foundation is important. You don't. Uh huh. So if I have advice to give at this particular time Mm -hmm. the foundation of your dates not be based on the fancy restaurant the cheesecake factory but Mm -hmm. simplicity and the quality of the amount of time that you get to spend with each other yeah even if it's just to go out for a walk in the park park, yeah you know and grab a light just a light bite as you walk Mm -hmm. that that right there is a lot yeah you can a lot and mm-hmm. just that not sitting at the table waiting for the server to come and yeah like no i mean basic. like we just said we just went to burger king yeah <laughs> i mean that wasn't on the list i heard i heard that on the radio that, that conversation i'm like oh please but okay. Look, a burger and a fry kept both of us happy shoot but that's good it's starting small because again the trying to really get to know the person and paying attention to that um, mm-hmm. and see your interaction with other people. How do you respond to that person giving a hot dog? How do you respond to you know the people walking in the park? Because you're also learning how they treat others and how they might possibly treat you, or they snap mm-hmm. me to them. How do they yeah. treat me? Um, so again, sometimes we get all focused because other things right. Kind of- you forget about the basics. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So like we I'm gonna give you an example, and I know we don't have much time, but we went to Hawaii for our 30th yeah 30th anniversary mm-hmm. and we caught the bus while we were there quite a few times very nice just to ride around so mm-hmm. that's what i mean the basics it's like oh i have friends that be like i'm not i'm not catching the bus mm-hmm. like i have a car i'm mm-hmm. sorry mm-hmm. why not right like, what, yeah, what, if you what, can't what? get on the bus then you high maintenance <laughs> you need to go talk to somebody else we're not we're not we're not gonna start there <laughs> 
And you know, on the bus, you get to sight, so you see way more than if you were driving. Exactly. You get to focus on the sightseeing as opposed to watching out for the rest of the traffic. Yes, because these babies yeah. don't all know how to drive, okay? Yes. <laughs> yeah, but it, it tells a lot about the person. Yeah. But some things that they don't want to accept. Mm -hmm. So at one point, you were walking or you were catching the bus before you have a car. And I don't care what kind of car you have, Mercedes mm -hmm. or whatever. You should still feel that you can catch the bus. Yes. And if you can't, then you need a reality check. Mm -hmm. Reality check. So those dates that want to be like, he should have a car, she should have a car. How about we just started the bus? Mm -hmm. You can have all that at home. Yeah. Yeah. Because we yeah. never know. Sometimes people that don't drive because they had a bad experience or they never wanted to drive. They use Uber. Absolutely. Uh -huh. Absolutely. Uh -huh. yeah. But if you expect that I ain't going out with him unless he coming to pick me up, uh, you already starting on level five, sis. <laughs> and uh, what are you going to bring to the table then? <laughs> That's a whole other conversation of what, who, and yes, what. It is. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> we need two hours. No. <laughs> Maybe we have to do a part two. Y'all let me know. Yeah. <laughs> What's something you want us to walk away with until we get to a part two? Because I feel like y'all got more to say. <laughs> um, I guess I'm close and you can close. I, I, I guess I would say respect yourself enough to be able to respect your partner. Mm -hmm. Always try to see from where they're looking and as long as you do those i, I think you really can't go wrong mm -hmm. put them first and and try to see the world through their eyes it minimizes the arguments um it, it helps you to be more compassionate and understanding when they're when there are tough times mm -hmm. and i think i think if you can manage that you know you'll be okay Yes, and treat others the way you want to be treated all Always. the time. Yes. Mm. Yes, that's the key. So. That's good. That's it. <laughs> <laughs>Thank you for listening to the Blending Fab Podcast. This podcast has been brought to you by our sponsor, Chosen Counselors. Make sure you hit subscribe if you haven't already and follow us on Instagram at blending underscore fab.